Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today I'm getting geared up. I've even got my netherite chest plate on me. I've even repaired my bow. I need to put the string away because today, today we are going to be working on finding all four types of piglin bastion remnants. I'm going to try and track down all of them so we can do a comprehensive overview of what you will find out there in the nether while you are exploring. And... I am going to be doing this before the Piglin Brute is implemented into the game, so we will be returning to Bastions at some point. Right now, I believe the Piglin Brute is supposed to generate when a structure is generated for the first time, so we are not going to see the Piglin Brute in today's video, and we will have to go looking for other Bastions when they are added to the game, but as of the time of this recording, it is not the case, so we will hopefully be able to go back and do another episode about them in future. But without further ado, we're going to step through into the nether and try and find the first of our four Bastion Remnants. And I have dipped into my shulker boxes here just so I can grab a couple of things that are going to help us raid the Bastion. First of all, we've got the hoppers, which we can use to drain piglins' chests without them realizing. And I've also got a couple of chest minecarts here just in case we need to pop down some storage and sort through exactly what it is. It is we have found. By the way, I have been working a little bit off camera on exposing the center of my nether hub here because I really want to be able to see this giant compass that we built in a previous episode and I really like the way this is coming together. So we'll probably do a couple of episodes in future about redesigning some of the aspects of this, adding in these extra biomes, maybe putting a roof on this thing. I think we're going to be doing some nether hub work in the near future. But for now, I want to head out into the wastes of the nether and find some of these bastions. And there is one in this direction that we've seen in a previous episode and even dipped our toes into, but I feel like needs exploring in more detail. And oh, that took a lot of flying around. My elytra is almost torn to shreds, but here we are back at this location where we have a bridge bastion remnants. These are named after the bridge section which often appears coming out of the mouth of this enormous rendering of a piglin, and I really like the design here. They've clearly put a lot of effort into exactly what this is supposed to look like, and it shows this decaying piglin head with the kind of hands raised either side is pretty awesome and there are so many ghasts around here i haven't even got a soul sand valley nearby i just need to take care of these guys so we can explore properly without them attacking the piglins for us there we go yes so let's hop in here and see what we've got i believe i have raided a couple of chests in this one already but i haven't broken them so i can at least show you guys where they are so if you hop down into the head section here where these lava falls are kind of behind the eye sockets of the piglins you'll find a chest on one side over here i believe you'll also find a chest matching this on the opposite side which is a little bit buried in the netherrack here but i'm fairly certain somewhere down here there is going to be an identical chest as with many other bastion remnants you'll find blocks of gilded blackstone which will be very tempting as you explore these structures but take note that piglins will attack you if you end up mining that stuff out and then around the back here the back of the head leads around to this little area where we can probably collect up some of that lava if we want to. I've flown up onto the head section to see if we can get a closer look from up here and see if there are any chests up here that we have missed. It doesn't look like there is, and aha, okay. So, you guys may remember from my first episode where I raided a bastion, it was kind of enshrouded in other terrain, and we couldn't see exactly what type of bastion that was. Well, that gives us a bit of a clue that what we were looking at was in fact one of these bridge bastions that is completely surrounded by terrain because that right there is one of the little piglin statues of the the hoglin kind of element i guess where they've got a small statue made of gold blocks which could be very valuable for us to mine obviously the piglins are going to get a little bit mad at us if we do but you know we might be able to make our way down here and if the mood takes us we can swipe some of those gold blocks it looks like there are a couple of piglins hanging around here though and since this borders a basalt delta. I need to be especially careful that there aren't too many pockets of lava hiding in amongst these. But now at least we get to see how these statues generate in all their glory. And it does seem like they didn't have a top section of the head like I originally thought. They do just have a set of gold blocks here with the two quartz slabs as tusks on this pedestal with a piglin snout. Uh, chiseled blackstone there. That's very cool looking. And these piglins are clearly patrolling to see if I'm going to take the gold. And you know what? I think I am. So let's let's grab a little bit of this. We'll anger them a little bit, but they aren't really going to be able to make their way up here. And I can just 
Take the high ground and snipe a bunch of them from the top. Perfect. I don't hear any more piglins hanging around. I gotta say that seemed to go pretty well. As long as you stay elevated, then piglins won't normally be able to get to you. And if they do, just give them a couple of swift taps with the sword and you'll probably be fine. But for your transgressions, you will get yourself 16 or so blocks of gold. I actually managed to get 15 that time. And I think it's because one of them was replaced by a magma block thanks to the basalt delta here. But this section here has a bunch of lava flows coming Coming in from the walls. It has a few pieces of chiseled basalt or polished basalt coming down from the ceiling, which looks very pretty. And as we come back up and around here, we can take a look at the rest of this structure. I'm pretty certain that this chest here is one that we've already drained of its contents, but let's pop down a hopper in case. No, it looks like we haven't. Okay, we get another gold block for our efforts. Very nice. I will grab that. I may as well check out the chest on the opposite side here as well. There might even be a couple of other chests hidden further down in the structure. So we'll take a quick look and see if we can grab some more of those. Many of these bastions will have corridor-like structures that really don't lead anywhere especially. Some of the bastions themselves are kind of thin and you'll just find yourself coming out the other side and sometimes they contain those winding passages downwards into the base of the structure which as we've seen in previous episodes often contains areas with hidden vaults of gold blocks which could be worth seeking out if you're into collecting gold while you're here in the nether. Hopping on further down it looks like I've found a couple more chests which I can drain of their contents. Yep, looks like we've still got some stuff in here and I'll work on this one on the opposite side as well. So once again, using a hopper this way is going to mean that the piglins don't get mad at you for checking out the contents of the chests and it looks like we've got some gilded blackstone here as well. Very nice. A couple of crossbows, a couple of pieces of gold armor, another gold block and some iron nuggets. That looks like all we're getting this time around and I'll probably just dump the rest of the stuff on the floor here. So you'll find that those chests tend to occur about halfway up the arms on this side where there is a large opening and you might find lava flows obstructing some of it but you'll certainly be able to get to an area like that that contains those chests. Let's see if there is one around here on the opposite side that mirrors that. Looks like it may actually be enclosed up here so let me see if we can staircase up to that through the lava which is a little bit precarious but oh look it looks like we have a gold block over here that might be what they are hiding and typically in these bastions if you find some of the chiseled blackstone brick you will typically find some sort of reward hiding behind it this seems to be where the piglins indicates that they are hiding something precious. Looks like we have made a couple of them mad, so I'm expecting them to come around the corner any second, but they have a tendency to take a bit of fall damage, so chances are they might have ended up injuring themselves on the way down. And while they are milling around up there, I'm going to make my escape <laughs> and fly out to a safe distance to either hopefully reset their aggro or at least get myself out of harm's way. And from the outside, almost like looking at a doll's house, we can see the piglins walking up and down these winding staircases and corridors that may up the base of these bastions and for the most part you will not find any loot chests down there as I've seen in previous videos it's mainly just a warren of corridors which sometimes leads to more of that chiseled blackstone with the pig snout on it behind which you might find the occasional block of gold but once again when you get further down into the structure that is going to be a case of fighting your way back out once you've mined any of the gold or the gilded blackstone as it may happen to be that you find down there you may also occasionally find some hoglins down here and I believe these hoglins do generate with the structure it's not like a hoglin stables section of a bastion which can be found elsewhere but I do think a couple of these will have generated with the structure because hoglins are certainly not native to the nether wastes or basalt deltas that surround this particular bastion so beware when you're exploring these things a hoglin or two may not be far behind but that does seem to be it for this bastion we don't seem to have anything else lurking around here so I'm going to take off and head for the next bastion on our list which is going to be the hoglin stable Luckily for me, it doesn't take too much exploring to find one of these. A Hoglin Stables Bastion pretty close to my central spawn location. So here we are. This is a little bit trickier to navigate. There are broken up corridors here. And as you can see, there are a bunch of Hoglins in each of them. Some of them just the tiny ones, though. So we can probably take care of those nice and easily. They're going to come back for another piece of me in a second. But they are nowhere near as dangerous as the larger ones. You'll find these areas staffed by piglins as well, which is funny considering the relationship between piglins and hoglins. Hoglins are sometimes hunted by larger packs of piglins, and yeah, you will find that they are on all levels of this broken up structure. The whole thing is a lot of navigation, a lot of winding corridors, and 
areas that are completely run down, meaning there are holes in the landscape everywhere, often to large areas of lava below. And this one in particular is a really great example to show you guys, but is also right in the middle of a lava lake, so there's really no escape for me except to fly out of here. Now, in terms of the chests I could find in this structure, I have a feeling that I have raided this particular example already, but once again, I'm going to pop in here and see if there's anything I can snag from underneath the eyes and ears of these piglins. Looks like I did leave a couple of things in here. Let's see what we can drain out of the hoppers. Oh, looks like we have a snout banner pattern. That is very good. I always like picking up more of those. We've got a few iron nuggets and some string. Once again, not the most stellar treasure in the world, but I'll take it. It's better than nothing. In this case, you'll often find the chests for these structures in the rampart sections at the back and sides. You won't find quite as many chests down here in the main body of the structure. So if you are a little bit troubled by the sheer number of hoglins that spawn in this place, you can basically leave well enough alone. You might find the occasional gold block down here, but as far as I can tell, there aren't really meant to be many chests down here in the rest of this structure. Yep, and I think it's happening. I think I just heard a hoglin versus piglin battle happening up here, and I have a feeling that that piglin there may actually be on the hunt. <laughs> it's certainly after this hoglin in particular. Maybe we can help it along. There we go. <laughs> get you taken care of. So occasionally when the hoglins get the upper hand, maybe the other piglins feel like stepping in and making sure that the population is curbed slightly. Well, it looks like we have explored basically everything I can from this area. I really don't seem to find a whole lot of chests around here. There might be one in the front of this section, wow, that piglin really got tossed into the air, didn't it? And yeah, it looks like I've raided all the chests that this one has to offer, unfortunately. So only a little bit of loot from this one. I think this may have been where we got a couple of gold ingots and things like that. But by and large, you will not find a huge amount of treasure in these hoglin stable bastions. And luckily for me, on my way back from finding that original bridge bastion, I stumbled upon one of these. This is a housing unit bastion, and the design of these is not immediately eye-catching at first glance. Of course, they look much the same as some of the other bastions in terms of materials. The difference here is that there is this kind of two-stage rampart. You'll notice roughly down the middle there, it kind of copies a pattern over from one side to the other. You'll see it's, it's kind of the same structure twice. And you'll notice that down here, there is this kind of asymmetrical structure where a housing unit ends up going down into, in this case, the nether rack here. So let's fly around and see if we can get a better angle on what's happening here. There you go. Further down into the structure, you will find some broken down areas that look a little bit like the hoglin stables. Instead of having hoglins, though, they will probably have a few more piglins because these are supposed to be the barracks of sorts where the piglins will make their home. So chances are you will find a few more gold blocks lurking in here, which the piglins are hoarding as some of their prized possessions. But before we go into that, let's head up to the ramparts up here and do our usual thing of looting the chests. Now, in terms of access to loot, these are potentially going to be some of the more valuable bastions to find because they've usually got a row of two chests with each of the rampart sections which means four chests total usually a double chest and a single chest but no less valuable for it we put our hoppers down here so the locals don't exactly know that i'm stealing from them and back at my storage area i've actually prepared a few shulker boxes where we can compare the loot we're getting from each of these so hopefully if ghasts don't decide to blow me up i should be able to compare these in a second or two. And thankfully the ghast completely obliterating that loot chest did not blow up my hopper and uh, doesn't seem to have angered the piglins at all, so that's totally fine. All right, a little bit more gilded blackstone in here, some bone blocks, a few gold nuggets. This is all looking fairly familiar at this point in time. I am actually really enjoying getting the occasional spectral arrows because occasionally that means I can shoot a ghast from a distance and the ghast glows as it dies. That's kind of a, a fun effect. Looks like we got another gold block from that one and some boots with soul speed too, which we've documented in other episodes. Kind of worth having if you are exploring these bastions for the first time and you need yourself a little bit of easier transport around the nether but honestly not the most valuable thing for me to find here man these piglins are noisy when a zombie piglin gets in here the zombie piglin really doesn't care but all of these piglins are running around the corner trying to get away from it and anytime it just randomly path finds around they kind of freak out and i feel a little bit sorry for them to be honest but now having looted that we need to head down into the center of these housing units because often towards the middle you will find areas like this this right here is 
a nether wart growing field and around that you'll find chests like this which can be looted and are probably going to contain some of the more valuable loot that this area has to offer. I expect it may be more of the same given what we've already found and we are going to find it generating quite close to lava down here which means it's going to potentially be a little bit hazardous to retrieve the hopper after this. But there we go, we got a soul speed one book, that's our first enchanted book that we've managed to find. The usual amount of magma cream, string and bone blocks, that kind of stuff. A gold chest plate or two that I don't necessarily need so I'm going to chuck those out. We'll take the Soul Speed book, we might as well. We're getting these from Piglin Bartering anyway, but it's always worth having one more. And, yep, the hopper got lost to lava. Oh well, fair enough. As you can see through the Blackstone in the distance, you will occasionally find chests surrounding this area as well. So these are definitely going to be one of the more lucrative bastions to find. If you want to raid one of these, you will find a lot of the same loot that we've been finding elsewhere, but tucked away in little cubbies like this, it is definitely worth investigating. More gold nuggets and spectral arrows, very good. I'll definitely take the bone blocks as well. I am enjoying getting a lot of bone blocks because it means more bone meal for me to use in farms in the overworld. We'll chuck the armor out and it looks like we are not getting anything else from this chest in particular. So I think we'll call this one done. I'm fairly certain there isn't anything else special that we need to find around here. But once again, remember to check these Warren-like corridors of Blackstone from time to time because you will occasionally find some areas like this where we have some snout blocks <laughs> as I've been thinking of them. And once you dig those up, you're likely to find some gold blocks underneath the floor, which if you feel like messing with the local piglins, collect them, knock yourself out, <laughs> see how far it gets you. I certainly feel like giving it a try and I haven't got my chest plate on right now, but uh, yep, yeah, looks like these guys are definitely going to line up and have a shot at me. All right, while I can, I'm going to grab these gold blocks. I'm going to eat a gold carrot. <laughs> it looks like everything is very, very gold themed around here. But I reckon it's probably time to make my escape. So goodbye, housing units. <laughs> and I think that one is definitely going to be one to look for. But perhaps the most valuable and the most dangerous bastion of all is the one that you see here in front of us. This is a treasure room bastion and already we can see outward signs of opulence from where we stand right here. I'm going to try and land in amongst these lava lakes and I have brought a couple of the potions of fire resistance that the piglins have been bartering with me because there is a lot of lava involved in this one as well and the danger is greater than most but the reward is also pretty great. You will recognize these from the outside by the sheer size of them, as well as the fact that these are perhaps the most well put together looking bastions of the lot. There are some pretty organized columns here. There are these giant bridge sections with troughs of lava underneath. And this side is looking a little bit broken down, but this side here, is looking pretty well fortified. These things are meant to be built to last. You can kind of see the piglin snout design there above the door because this is where the piglins hide the majority of their treasure. We're not gonna loot this quite yet, but I'm gonna look down on the center and see what we have down here because, oh yes, there are some gold blocks down there, my friends, and there is other treasure besides. But first, let's head over to this direction and let's see if we end up finding a couple of loot chests in the ramparts here, I am fairly certain that we will. There are usually some precarious staircases that will take you up the sides here as well, so no worries if you don't have a light tree, you should be able to make your way up here. And in this room, lit by a couple of lanterns, you will find a couple of lingering loot chests. So let's hop the contents out of these and see what we end up getting. This looks like the usual sort of fare, a couple of chains, some gold equipment, and a crossbow or two. I'm not really that interested in that stuff, we'll probably drop it all off as we continue around. Let's see what's in this guy. Oh, there we go, we hit the jackpot that time some ancient debris. There's another one I don't have to mine, I guess, <laughs> towards the eventual netherite beacon. That is the plan, at least. Once again, crossbows and that kind of stuff I'm not that interested in. We'll probably drop those off. And there certainly is a whole pack of piglins up here, so I'm going to try and dig my way around them and see if there is anything else to be found up here on the top levels. Yeah, it looks like we have another chest down here. These actually have a multiple sections of ramparts, each of which can contain a series of chests, so let's see if we get anything good in this. Once again, ancient debris would be absolutely grand, but I don't know if we're going to get a whole lot of that. Yeah, once again, we ended up with a few swords and a few crossbows and I guess some arrows that I'll chuck away because I don't really need them. I've got infinity on my bow, but once again, crying obsidian, obsidian and gilded blackstone, probably some of the highlights here. All means it's resources that you don't have to mine or barter. And it looks like that is both sections taken care of. I'm going to ignore these gold blocks for now because the piglins will get prematurely mad at me if I end up 
mining those. But of course, once again, you could probably go further down into this structure and find some more of those little hidey holes where the piglins will have buried even more gold blocks further down in the structure. Once again, look for those chiseled pieces of blackstone with the pig snout on them, and you'll probably find yourself a few more riches hidden in the walls. But the riches I am after are going to be over here in this part of the structure, and they are mainly going to be further down towards the center, so I'm going to hop down carefully around some of these bridges and see if we can find any more chests to loot around the outsides. There are a lot of these suspended walkways hanging in the center of the room which provide a good vantage point for you to be able to see outwards and as you can see over there we do have a couple of other chests lining the outside so you'll find chests spawning around the exterior of this as well as that central treasure pile in the interior and that treasure pile is going to be very heavily guarded and not just by piglins so we need to take some extra care when we decide to go after that. But I'm going to hop down here and you will find often that these chest areas are lit up with lanterns. So if you don't see any lava around but you do see light coming from a certain area, it's often a good sign that there are chests around. We'll take a look at that one in just a second. For now, let's grab a little bit more of the loot that we've got in here. All looks good to me. Yep, I'll take it. I'll take it. Very nice. It looks like we have another chest around here. So we are expecting to get at least three or four chests on the outside here. There may even be a couple on the lower levels. And then down there, I think there may even be a chest hiding amongst those gold blocks. We'll find out in a moment. That second chest was hardly worth it. We got some crossbows and some strings maybe a couple of arrows out of that one, maybe some chains as well. Let's see if we get anything better out of this one or if I'm just going to go straight for the center. Yeah, we got some soul speed boots out of that one, but once again, mostly just chains and arrows, stuff that I'm not super interested in right now. I think the last resort is going to have to be checking out that treasure room in the center and seeing what it actually has. So traversing our way down here is going to be a little bit tricky. There are some sections here we can jump across to. There are some sections we can bridge to, maybe make a couple of staircases here and there. And there are endermen wandering around this structure. Well, they should not have generated with this. They've probably just spawned naturally as part of the nether terrain and jumped on in here. But as you can hear, there are magma cubes inside and they may not be naturally generated at all because down there, hanging underneath the bridge, is a magma cube spawner, which you can see is now active. And this is the first time a spawner has been added to vanilla Minecraft since I think probably blaze spawners were added, which is actually kind of fascinating. It means we have a new opportunity to farm another spawner. It means we have a new mob that can be farmed from spawners in vanilla, in survival, and this presents some exciting opportunities for a magma cube farm. You will find that the spawner only generates on one side of this bridge though. There is not a double spawner inside of here. And if you're the kind of person who likes to keep spawners handy, you will want to make sure that that is preserved so that you can farm it later. But those of you who are just here to adventure might just end up destroying the spawner to save yourself the trouble because unlike piglins, of course, magma cubes are always going to be hostile to you and they are lethal in this update. They pack a heck of a punch and with a gold helmet on and potentially some elytra, you're not going to have as much defense against the magma cubes attacks as you otherwise would have. But we're going to play it smart. We're going to drop down here on the opposite side of the bridge and we're going to glide our way into this treasure room to see what is here. Now, I'm not going to touch the gold blocks for now. What I'm after is this chest in the center and hopefully avoiding the attacks of any magma cubes that wander our way. So I'm going to block off as much of this treasure room as I can and probably block in the roof a little bit as well because there are clearly some holes in there that the magma cubes could jump through if they want to squish me. There we go. We should have protected ourselves from at least the large magma cubes. The small ones could still get through the center here, but they will not be a huge problem. And there's maybe a little bit of room around the back here, but we do need somewhere we can make our escape. So I'm going to sacrifice my last hopper here to see what kind of loot is in this chest, because in theory, we should get the best loot possible from Bastions out of here. And there we go. We got some more ancient debris and then some crying obsidian and some iron nuggets. You will occasionally find diamond and gear spawning in these loot chests, but unfortunately that does not seem to be the case this time. And you know what? I'm feeling lucky. I feel like we could potentially stave off any piglin attacks and all I need to do is potentially jump in lava at the end of this if we want to avoid them entirely. So I'm going to throw a splash potion in the air and I'm going to mine out all these gold blocks so that we can take them home as loot. And hopefully the piglins aren't going to get too mad at me right away. And if they do, then I can just fight them off, leap into the lava and hopefully make my escape from here. 
Yep, I'm taking a little bit of damage from the magma cubes, but hopefully I should be able to engage my wings. Oh, okay, and I have made my way out. Oh, on like two hearts worth of health. That is not a joke. Ladies and gents, that I'm, I'm actually a little bit out of breath right there. I thought I was going to die in all of that. Well, thank goodness for fire resist potions, gold carrots, and a little bit of extra defense. Of course, I could have added my netherite chest plate and a netherite helmet into the mix once the piglins were mad at me, but oh boy, that is a rush. <laughs> it has been rare for a dungeon like this to actually scare me with how easily it could have been for me to die right then. So we are lucky that we escape with our lives. A little bit more blockage around the outside, a little bit more protective barrier here and there. We might have been able to do that a little bit more successfully. But for now, we came away with 14 blocks of gold and a little bit of ancient debris. I call that a win. Oh, it feels good to be back in the overworld after all of that chaos and mayhem at that last treasure room bastion. But I have prepared the shulker boxes here so we can review and recap some of the loot that we have got. Bearing in mind, of course, that I have been throwing out some of the stuff that I find a little bit less valuable. These are the items that we got from that treasure room bastion. There is a lot of gold blocks in there and once again... The chance for some ancient debris or even some diamond loot at the bottom of those treasure rooms is sometimes worth finding, especially if you're trying a nether survival thing and you need yourself some diamond gear. Looking at what else we've got, I think the bridges are worth raiding as well, simply for the gold blocks that you will find in those statues and obviously some gold blocks further down in the structure as well. Plus the loot was pretty good. The bridge bastion that I raided before also had some of the pig snout banner patterns and I think that's where I got either a lodestone or my pig step music disc. So that can't be ignored either. The hoglin stables is a little bit light on the loot side. You won't really find a huge amount of chests there. What you will find is a lot of angry hoglins after you. So if you want to farm yourself some pork chops nice and early, I guess you can head over there if you can't find a crimson forest nearby. The housing units are surprising to me. I think you can find a fair amount of loot there simply because of the sheer amount of chests that you're going to find hidden around the outside. There aren't so many gold blocks that are naturally generated, but they'll be there. You'll potentially find a few of them, and if not, you'll find a fair few of them inside the chests themselves. But last but not least, of course, I think the treasure room is worth it. If not for the loot itself, and potentially the chance for ancient debris and diamond gear, but for that magma cube spawner, because that means there is a chance for us to make a spawner-based magma cube farm at some point in the future of this series, and that prospect is more exciting to me than most of the treasure we have here. But folks, that is a rundown of the four types of bastions that are now present in Minecraft 1.16, the nether update. I do hope you've enjoyed taking a look at them with me, and best of luck if you decide to raid them yourselves. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.